Greetings, programs. Welcome to the first episode of Tomorrow Unlocked, a history of cybercrime. We're going back to malware's Paleolithic age. More seasoned viewers might remember one of these nasties nuking your spinning hard drive. And all of us will learn a thing or two about where cybersecurity began. We start with Cascade, one of the first truly global viruses. The outbreak hit IBM PCs hard in the late 80s. And as we're about to learn, left an impressive mark. Okay, let's get to it. Today, he runs one of the world's largest cybersecurity companies, but back then, Eugene Kaspersky was a Moscow-based junior software engineer looking for an idea. Okay. Uh, well, the first time I met the computer virus, it was uh, in uh, 1989. It was Cascade virus, uh, which uh, infected the floppy disks. It has just a one side effect. The payload of the virus, it was just the video effects. So the, the letters on the screen, they were falling down, depending on the time, on the date, on some random conditions. They were just falling down. Meanwhile, some 3,000 kilometers away, on a volcanic island near the Arctic Circle, We had a bunch of different cascade variants. Most of them would uh, just cause uh, letters to fall down the screen and end up in a pile at the bottom. This particular variant that I was looking at was not one of those. This cascade would reformat your heart. Pretty nasty. That's Friedrich Skulesen, a 25-year-old Icelandic computer programmer who turned up for his temporary coding job on the day IBM Reykjavik offices got infected. I mean, I only had to be there for one day, but just by chance, one of those random events that changed the course of your life, uh, it happened, I happened to be there testing on exactly this day when it got hit by the virus. I got a copy of the virus and I took it home. I disassembled it. I thought, hey, this is cute. And, as they say, the rest is history. This was what was going on inside those international business machines. Imagine the text on your screen becoming a waterfall of letters, making your computer impossible to use. Cascade targeted .com files, the command files to run programs. Its sneaky package came in two parts the main message, the virus body, and a special code to hide the message, the encryption routine. Each time Cascade infected a file, it would scramble the main message differently. This made the virus look unique in every infection and hard to spot. When an infected file was opened, the virus decrypted itself and got to work. It used a clever trick. The file size was the key to unscramble the code. But Cascade had a weakness. While the virus body changed, the decryption routine remained the same, like using identical locks on different doors. Once you know how one works, you can open them all. Tricky bit of code, eh? Safe to say, Friedrich caught the bug. People speculated about nation-state actors, about East versus West in the Cold War. But no one ever learned the origins of Cascade. The focus for our young InfoSec warriors was stopping the spread. The big mainframes, uh, they occupy the big rooms. ECs, personal computers. They just had uh, the floppy disks like this. Uh, it's just one to two megabytes of memory. Uh, no internet, uh, no Wi-Fi, of course, uh, no USBs. Uh, so it was, well, <laughs> that's the history of computing. I was using the first 33 megahertz uh, 386 machine. It was one of the top end machines in Iceland. The hardware that is of course ridiculously slow and obsolete today, but uh, then it was uh, blazingly fast.
I was very curious what's that computer virus and uh, I left one one application not disinfected it was infected uh, and later I disassembled the computer virus uh, and I found that it has an encryption the very primitive encryption algorithm I disassembled it on my computer so this is cute but I realized that in order to write a disinfector, I had to get more infected files. And to get more infected files, I had to infect a computer. So I bought another computer, an uh, IBM XT, with a huge 10 megabytes of disk space, and I figured out how to disinfect. I printed uh, on paper. <laughs> uh, I printed the disassembly of this virus, and. I spent the weekend to work on that, to understand how does it work, to understand all the routines. I spent a day to work with a, with a pencil on a disassembly. <laughs> that was fun. Sounds straightforward, doesn't it? But not back then. There was no cybersecurity industry in the 80s. Eugene and Friedrich were pioneering a new niche in the computing revolution. This was early days reverse engineering, studying viruses and writing code. There were no business at that time, and it was uh, hard to predict that it will become big business. And some people said the problem for computer viruses are solved because we know how to how to find them, we know how to kill them. Um, so there is no no problem uh, with computer viruses. I said no, guys. Uh, because we are fighting with uh, human brains. The virus writers, they are they're humans, so they're creative. They will develop new technologies. They develop the more smart ways how to infect computers. I started with this cascade virus, wrote a detector and a disinfector for that. I mean, I was just a single guy working in Iceland. So what I did was to release it as shareware. Just download this, make as many copies as you like, and give it to all your friends. And if you use it, send me a little bit of money. It worked. It worked ridiculously well. I mean, I was getting a bunch of Fortune 500 companies paying for a license for 50,000 machines. The pricing was basically one dollar per machine per year. I, I remember Jehovah's Witnesses worldwide buying it. And if you get $50,000 often enough, then eventually we'll start talking about real money, right? 50K, Friedrich, hardly to be sneezed at. Back in 1990, that would have gotten a tidy new 911 Carrera. Mm-hmm. So what impact did Cascade have on the lives of our two cybersecurity pioneers? I wrote a tool to disinfect cascade virus, and I realized that actually the computer virus is just a technology. There is no magic. It's just algorithms. Uh, so if you run the algorithm in an opposite way, uh, if you reverse that, uh, it will disinfect the infected files. Just because I went to IPM on that day and not the day before or the day after, my life took a different turn. Although I have to admit, I kind of see myself as the toilet paper producer of the internet because uh, I make a product that nobody really wants to use. But if you are stuck without it uh, at the wrong time, things can become really messy. Wow. Memorable metaphor, eh? Thanks, Friedrich and Eugene, for taking us back to the start of this awesome industry and telling us about the first virus that turned your heads. Fascinating, that's the virus that started both your careers. One way or another, those cascading characters wrote the first chapter of the history of cybercrime. Well, folks, till next time, stay safe, stay alert, and remember, don't get caught without toilet paper. End program. Welcome to the computer age. That is exciting.